everybody, this is Steve, and when I show you this, what do you see? Yeah, obviously it's a cross, but look deeper. What do you see? Hope or fear? Life or death? As Christians, we have an answer to that question. We wear the cross around our necks, close to our heart. We make the sign of the cross over ourselves constantly during church services, before and after we eat, whenever we need it. The cross is hope, life, victory over sin and death, a sign of God's promise. But if you were living 2,000 years ago, you might not be so sure about that. The Roman Empire used the cross to scare people, to torture them, to kill them. You wouldn't see a cross without a person nailed to it, and that sent a very clear message. Rome was in charge. The disciples knew this, and it scared them. So when they saw Roman soldiers coming to arrest Christ, they panicked. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Christ was mocked and beaten and led up to Golgotha to be crucified. And at the very end, despite all the people who loved him, despite all the people who saw him heal people and raise people from the dead, he was basically alone. Only four people were brave enough to stand at the foot of the cross. In that dark moment when Christ died, it seemed like everything was over. It seemed like Rome had once again used the cross to send the message. We are in charge. But now we know that that's not what the cross really means. At least, not in the light of Christ. God made everything. From the biggest galaxies to the tiniest grains of sand, God made everything for a reason, with a purpose. And you need to know that purpose if you're gonna find the true beauty in all things. People use the cross to do terrible things, but from the very beginning, God had a different plan for it. We normally divide the Bible into two parts, the New Testament and the Old Testament. The New Testament is about Christ, who he is, and what that means for us. But so is the Old Testament, even though the meaning is a little bit more hidden. In fact, we can see the cross in the books of the Old Testament. We can see that from the very beginning, God was planning on using it as an instrument of life. We may not see the word cross in the Old Testament, but we see its shape. And we see other important words, like tree and wood, which the church even uses to this day in its hymns to describe the cross. For instance, when Moses led Israel out of Egypt, the Red Sea was in their way. But God had Moses stretch forth his hand over the water with his staff, his wooden staff. And the waters pulled back, and Israel was able to cross over to the other side, to the Promised Land, to life. While they were in the wilderness, the people were being plagued by serpents, which were biting them and killing them. So God had Moses create a bronze serpent and lift it up on a pole so that everyone could see it and live. Can you see the cross? And later, the people faced enemies that they needed to overcome. During one battle in particular, the Israelites were only winning when Moses had his hands outstretched in the sign of a cross. Being a bee is about finding the goodness that God has placed in all things. And the cross is an excellent example of that. For a long time, people feared the cross, and for good reason. But from the very beginning, God had a plan to use the cross as an instrument of life, to open the door to the resurrection. So the next time you're tempted to think badly about something or someone, think of the cross and look a little deeper. So let's be the bee see all things, especially the cross, in the light of Christ. Be the bee and live orthodoxy. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll see you all next week.